Hi everybody, welcome, thanks for coming by. Uh, if you've been here before, that's super awesome. Thank you for coming by again. If you haven't been here before, my name's Darby. I'm not an expert in history, um, far from it, but I do love to talk about it. So that's why I'm here, just to talk about it and share with you guys. So jumping right into today's video, um, by the time that this posts and is up, It'll be about two weeks since the movie Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile has been released. Now, if you haven't seen that, I'd recommend seeing it. If you have, you probably have some of the mixed feelings that I have about it. The movie is about Ted Bundy, and it stars Zac Efron as Ted Bundy in the movie. It's based off of the book written by Ted's uh, girlfriend. I understand where the movie was trying to go and where it was coming from, and that makes some sense why it did what it did. It was trying to depict um, the difficulty that Liz, um, Ted's, Ted Bundy's girlfriend, had in dealing with his whole trial and the process of his convictions and everything like that and um, some of the pain that she went through and it did depict that but it depicted that Liz's frustration and pain at the expense of Ted Bundy's victims. So this happens a lot when we go and talk about serial killers. We, glo we tend to glorify the serial killer because we're fascinated by what could have caused them to do what they did or what could have gone wrong in their heads or what they did because it's often so heinous or it's always so heinous and so awful and so inconceivable to us that we just want to get into their heads. I'm guilty of it, a lot of people are guilty of it. It's just natural to want to understand what could have caused that. What we don't do enough is we don't recognize the victims of these criminals, of these awful, horrible people. And they become footnotes in their own murders. This is so obvious in this movie that the victims' names actually were essentially a footnote at the end of the movie um, appearing listed on a black screen. And because of that, I wanted to put together this video as a kind of tribute for us to remember who those names were, because they're more than names. They were people that Ted Bundy murdered. They were young people, some as young as 12, that had their lives cut tragically short by the man glorified in this film. So for the remainder of this video, I'm going to read through some of the names of Bundy's victims and give short little descriptions and hopefully some insight into who they were as a person. Linda Ann Healy was a 21-year-old college student who disappeared out of her room in a house that she lived with with four other girls. She worked at a radio station giving the weather report and ski report. She was a talented musician and full of life. She participated in the choir at her school. She was a psychology major and loved to work with mentally handicapped children. The day she had gone missing, she had been planning to make a dinner for her parents. That dinner never happened. Donna Gail Manson was 19 years old when Bundy killed her. At the time, she was known to be depressed and was not reported missing for six days after her disappearance. Her body has not yet and may never be identified. In her life, she played the flute and was said to have always carried a camera. Susan Rancourt 
was 18 years old when she was murdered. She was a pre-med student, highly involved with campus life. She enjoyed baking for other people and enjoyed um, the company of the campus police officers. She tutored German and sciences. A monument was dedicated to her at Central Washington University in 2012. Roberta Parks was 20 years old. She has been described by friends as having a demure, sullen, and at times brooding personality. She suffered from an emotional disorder that was potentially what we know as bipolar disorder. But she was studying liberal arts and world religions. She was going through a rough patch in her life, having just broken up with her boyfriend and lost her father to a heart attack a few days prior. But at 20 years old, Roberta Parks would have had many years had she not met Theodore Bundy. Denise Naslin was 18 years old when Bundy got to her at the beach. She's described as a very loving and caring person, and her friends said that she was friendly toward everyone and would have helped if someone had asked. Denise had a boyfriend who lived with her. She was studying computer programming and working part-time at an office. Janice Ott, 23 years old, died July 14, 1974, the same day as Denise. They both disappeared from Lake Sammamish State Park. Janice had been married for a little over a year. While in school, she studied psychology with focus on the antisocial personality. At the time of her death, she worked as a Seattle probation officer and wanted to help people who needed special guidance. She had a bright personality and had been given the name Sunshine Girl for this personality. Nancy Wilcox was only 16 years old when Bundy murdered her. She worked at a drive-in movie theater and went to Olympus High School. She's been described as humble, shy, and funny. She was very close to her boyfriend and had a few good close friends that cared for her. Melissa Smith was 17 years old. She was the daughter of her city's police chief. Not much is known about her other than when Bundy kidnapped her, she had gone to a pizza shop to console a friend who was having boyfriend troubles and disappeared. Laura Amy was also 17 years old. She had recently dropped out of school in the 10th grade and was currently living with friends and working odd jobs. Laura was a drifter in life and trying to find something that she could hold on to. Even so, she was close with her parents whom she spoke with every day. Laura never had her chance to find something that she could care about. Deborah Kent, 17 years old, lived with her mother, her father, and her four siblings. She was abducted as she was leaving a high school play to pick up her younger brother. Deborah had hoped to become a social worker after high school, but was never given the chance to explore that possible career path. She disappeared the same night that Carol Durange escaped. Karen Campbell was 23 years old. She was a registered nurse on vacation with her fiance, with whom she was planning a wedding. Karen disappeared in her well-lit hotel hall, somewhere between the elevator and her room. Very little is known how this disappearance was executed. Julie Cunningham was 26 years old when she was kidnapped and murdered. She worked in the Vale Ski Shop. It said that she was searching for love at the time and becoming depressed and disillusioned. Yet she was a kind soul and offered to help Bundy who was on crutches. He then kidnapped her and strangled her. Denise Alverson was 24 years old. She had just had an argument with her husband and set out on her bike to ride to her parents' house to cool down. Bundy kidnapped her sometime before she made it to her parents' house. Her bike and sandals were later found. Her body has not been discovered. Lynette Culver was one of Bundy's youngest victims at only 12 years old. 
She disappeared from her middle school in seventh grade. She was the youngest of three siblings, one whom had died before her disappearance. Lynette had not had many years to develop her personality or experience life before Bundy took it away from her. It's unsettling to think what Lynette may have been able to make of herself and what kind of person she may have been had Bundy not taken her life so early. Susan Curtis was only 15 years old when she was abducted on June 27, 1975 from a youth conference at the Brigham Young University. She attended Woods Cross High School and participated on the track team and the baseball team. Although she had been described as a troubled youth, things were looking up as her family was trying to bring her back into the LDS church fold. Margaret Bowman was 21 years old. She was an art history major with a focus on classical civilization at Florida State University. She loved to read. She was a part of the French club in high school and participated on the tennis team. Margaret had pledged to the Chi Omega sorority in honor of her grandmother, who was also a member. At the time of her death, she was learning to sew and was making a dress. Although I wasn't able to find very much information on who Lisa Levy was before her death in 1978, the bite mark left on her body proved to be the evidence needed to send Bundy to the electric chair at trial. Kimberly Leach was Bundy's last victim. She was a 12-year-old 7th grader at Lake City Junior High. She's been described as shy and a good kid who wasn't known to miss school. A close friend described her to the ABC News as a beautiful young girl who would have done great things had she not crossed paths with a monster. I wanted the names at the end of Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile to be more than just names. I wanted these girls and these women to have faces and to have their stories told. Okay guys, thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of that video, and if nothing else, I hope that this would have helped to bring a little bit more humanity into the people that Ten Bundy killed. Um, so if you like this video and you want to see more different types of movie reviews or um, stories about people or different events in history, that's kind of what I'm planning to do with this channel. Um, so. Please subscribe uh, and ring the bell for notifications. I'm going to be posting a video every week, so um, you can stay up to date if you do those things. Thanks, you guys. Uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. Go out and make some history.